we have a very exciting session coming up. Uh, we have with us celebrity chef Vikas Khanna. Uh, in the recent past, especially in the COVID times, we've seen Vikas uh, Khanna take up community service as his personal agenda. Uh, let's hear more about this from him. Uh, to engage him in a conversation, we have Shelly Walia, who's a senior journalist from, from Quint. Over to you, uh, Shelly. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I cannot see because Hello there, hello. Uh, it's such a such an honor to be sitting across from you on my system and talking to you. Thank you so much for talking to us and taking out the time. Uh, as Pooja described you, we've seen a completely different side of you during this pandemic. You've reached out to millions of people in India. You have, you've, uh, you've, you targeted 25 million meals right at the beginning of the pandemic and here you are months down and the mission is accomplished. So uh, just, I will just want to ask you first, uh, you are a Michelin star chef, you are an author, you are a filmmaker, and this, during this pandemic, we have seen you in a completely different way, where you have come in a humanitarian way. I'm sorry, I'm a bit nervous because I'm sitting right across from you, so I'm very excited but also very nervous. So, first of all, I want to ask you what is the thing that you can't do with the work of Vikas Khanna. So, first of all, this is your question. I can't do a suitcase pack. I can't do basic stuff. I can't hear... I can't hear instructions from the air hostess. I can't... I don't... It just lifts my mind. I just... I have this kind of... I just can't pack my bag. I have a very big problem. Because if there's also, you know, I've been traveling like crazy. I still forget things. I forget my passports. I forget everything. The basic life is... It's a total mess. Wow. But I'm, I'm, okay. I'm okay with that now. I've accepted the fact that I was not cut out for that. So for a Michelin star chef to have such a regular uh, basic problem, that's very uh, comforting to know, let me tell you. So, uh, you sit so far from India, and now we know the time difference. It's more than 12 hours. How do you manage your time? And how are you able to do this? And if you can tell our viewers a little bit more about Feed India, what you have been able to do. You have targeted sections of people who are the most sidelined. Uh, let me give a few examples. You have looked after, I should say looked after, the widows in Vrindavan. You have looked after the boatmen in Varanasi. You have targeted help So how do you manage your time? Uh, you know, sitting so far away from India, this long distance relationship, and how do you, how are you able to do such a huge, massive project sitting from there? You know, <clears throat> we started the whole operation on April 1st, or that time I decided, okay, you know, this is, this has to be done, because there will be shortages. Uh, India declared lockdown March end. So we knew it is a month end and a lot of these places are dependent on monthly donations of dry rations or donations. And right now everyone is vulnerable. So I thought that there can be a problem here. I just feel that the time difference thing about like, you know, day and night, it, it actually really helped me because uh, it got me time to plan the whole thing. Next day it got me time. Before India would wake up, so I'll always tweet before India wakes up, this is our agenda right now. These are the cities we are covering. These are the foundations we are collaborating with. And NDRF, National Disaster Response Force, was the biggest partner we had. So we were very clear. I think the time difference gave me, and also I put everything on the back burner. A lot of people did not know that, you know, I had a restaurant which had to open and everything got delayed. But we still opened it yesterday. We still opened it. And it is jam-packed right now. We are full. They yeah, are doing double seating right now. It's just open and I'm proud of it that people want to support this. And this is the first time it's happened that I'm not there for opening of the restaurant. I don't open restaurants too much, you know, yeah. because uh, I am very, very 
emotional about opening a place because I feel it's an extension of me and my and my family and my city and my country. And I feel that वो बहुत ध्यान से करना चाहिए आपको because you get the, everything gets judged through you, through your work. So पहली बार I opened a restaurant on Zoom calls and on uh, video calls and emails. Generally, I'm always stationed there 20 hours. But we also figured out the feed India was the priority, and I put everything else on the back burner. So I have four books which had to be submitted. I delayed everything. I said, my mom said everything can wait, but the people who are hungry walking on the highways they can't. So I just, I just set up my moral compass through my mother. Wow, and I think I, I manage my time well because I am very focused, and I don't get emotionally, uh, you know, uh, derailed very fast. मेरे को जो करना होता है आई मूव वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड यू नो दैट इज द रीजन यू कुड डू सो मच इन वी हैव टू डॉक्यूमेंट्रीज व्हिच वी फिनिश ड्यूरिंग द पेंडेमिक एंड आई हैव सच अ ह्यूज फीचर फिल्म कमिंग आउट एंड वी वर डूइंग एवरीथिंग इन अ वेरी ऑर्गेनाइज्ड वे बट एवरीथिंग वाज पुट ऑन द बैक बर्नर सिंस अप्रैल 1st बिकॉज़ इवन पीपल हु वर सेंडिंग मी लेटर्स फ्रॉम द लॉयर्स आई होप दे आर हियरिंग मी नाउ दैट आई वाज डिलेड इन माय प्रोजेक्ट्स एंड डिलेड माय सबमिशंस एंड वी हैव अ वेरी बिग एक ना बहुत बड़ा साइकिल में चलता होगा सो एवरीथिंग इज डिसिप्लिन टू अ डिफरेंट लेवल इस टाइम पे ये सबमिशन है सर आई हैव जस्ट फिनिश मास्टर शेफ इंडिया लाइक द मार्च वेड एंड दैट इज व्हेन यू नो यू वेंट एंड बिकॉज़ मार्च मास्टर शेफ इंडिया इज क्वाइट टाइम कंज्यूमिंग सो आई फेल्ट के व्हेन आई गो बैक टू यूएस आई शुड बी एबल टू फिनिश ऑल दिस प्रोजेक्ट एवरीथिंग वाज टाइम डे बाय डे बट यू राइट दैट फीड इंडिया गिव मी अनदर डायमेंशन ऑफ लाइफ मेरे को लगता है कि It is bigger than even if I win three Michelin stars, I'll never be. So that is right the way this works. That's so so uh, beautiful, the uh, cast. Just want to understand. You have your mother, your mother, your mother, your mother. In one of the recent interviews, you actually said that how your idea of hunger does not come from India, but it comes from America, and it created quite a buzz. Trust me, all the Indian media channels were. Uh, quite moved to hear that from you. So, if you can give us a little bit of a glimpse, as in, मतलब आपका जो struggle रहा है, and you are a complete success story. So, how did you kind of relate? Uh, how did you? How do you associate the idea of hunger to America and not to India? You know, India में there is certain thing कि कोई ना कोई आपको खाना खिला देगा. And you know, I also, uh, of course, I say it very openly, the Western media wants to play that. all the time that you know they gave me the platform and you know all the success stories and everything happened as a as something which was absolutely globalization of indian food and they did it and i just keep telling them you did not do it and i have a very big problem when people take credit of anything because i i give credit to my mother and father and no one else deserves it and all my life like after the success started happening step by step i used to hear this word a lot we made you I will have a lot of Western media come to me and say we made you, and a lot of European Americans will say we made you, and then my call and a lot of people whom I worked with they will always say you made you. I said you know what actually you did not make me, I was only made by my parents, and I have stuck on to that, and it gives me gravity when I say that, and I mean it. And so when I was interviewing, I was trying to tell uh, BBC that uh, it was CNN, yeah BBC. So BBC they, they the guy asked me ke you know you come from a not a well to do family and you know look at the american dream you're living and uh, you must have understood hunger from india in india there is something about people the way they share food and you know many times we happen because we used to travel from delhi all the way to manipur uh, to uh, palghat and then to uh, mangalore it was almost like a 32 hours train ride to go to college agar aapke paas khana nahi hai na tab bhi koi na koi khila dega you sit there and somebody will share it and i have said this is very basic ethos of india and i did not understand hunger from india so much as i did from new york because here nobody shares like that people have uh, this people have charity work which is done through organizations and foundations but india does this on individual scale so i say that i was trying to explain to them later when people i got such a you know of course when you have something which goes viral you also have set back of that and yeah. i said just have to remember that india runs on 1.3 billion foundations if america has 40 different great foundations india has 1.3 so on individual capacity what we contribute is 
is phenomenal. It's just, uh, it's even if it's small contribution, it could be just sharing of, you're eating something and somebody says, I, say, Ye bhi taste kar lo. I just feel that doesn't happen in the Western world because you're very law oriented here. And you don't want anyone to come after you saying that I think the answer okay. came from that moment. And I somehow feel when people target my city, I'm just a, I get a little defensive. And I always have to say to you, you don't understand India just from, you understand India from a very small uh, spectrum of slumdog millionaires. And you've not been able to expand yourself to see that how much layers India lives in. As a, as a filmmaker, I would uh, urge you to make more movies about India so that people get a better picture of what the country is about. Uh, I just have one other question uh, before I can probably let you go. Uh, you managed to open a restaurant, uh, Elora, that you just mentioned, while you are sitting in New York and the restaurant is in Dubai. I mean, our Zoom is going to work from I mean, we uh, are uh, digital uh, organizations and our Zoom is going to work. I'm very fascinated by the fact that you have been able to kind of share recipes with people who will be working back in Dubai and how did that coordination go and also because food is so much about smell uh, so just if you can tell me they, they taste it and kind of like give you a feedback so we were working on this project Ashish is uh, the head chef and uh, I've worked with Ashish for many years and Ashish knows the uh, me in and out then I'm and the thing is that I don't have a very outrageous demeanor I get upset but I don't have I, I don't remember shouting unconsciously but I, because of my I think a mother's genes no I am extremely in any emergency also I'm calm and people think hey, you know what the hell is this I lose my wallet and the cops are saying you must be joking because you're so calm I'm like, I don't know how to be unrestable exterior, like in outside, but uh, being calm also helps you in executing this project. But I do say that, you know, I, it was very difficult for me and um, to have a restaurant because, you know, it's a, it's a labor of love. But when we started figuring out that, you know, we have to do it because there's a lot of, it creates jobs, it creates opportunities, it creates guest services, experiences. So when came, we said, and it also talk. It's so easy to sit on Zoom call and talk about positivity and let's be positive and let's let's get the industry back to its toes. I feel that by example, karna bahot hi, uh, it is a little difficult to do that to live by that example. I said, let's set an example that during this pandemic we'll never forget it that we actually opened a full fledged, full operational restaurant with food which is totally different and you know. You're very, very proud of it, actually. Yeah. I'm just, it's just like a, somebody who's just given birth to some little baby and who sees that life is being introduced to the world. That's amazing. Uh, once, another question that I had from you was that uh, since we are talking about restaurants and you just a couple of minutes ago told us how jam-packed the restaurant is, uh, how, do you think that it's going to change at all as to how people look at restaurants, how people go out? Uh, after, like before, during the pandemic, like how is that going to change? Everything is going to change about the hospitality industry. It's, it's the most vulnerable industry right now. If you see what's happening in New York, there was an article in Eater yesterday. That they do not even know how many restaurants have been shut down permanently. The restaurants are not opening. So there's so many restaurants. They're just, they're just saying 1,000 restaurants closed in the duration of eight weeks. Just last eight weeks, 1,000 restaurants in Manhattan like the capital of dining on the planet. And they don't even know how many restaurants are shut down who are not, like we don't know about them right now. So it's a little, uh, I think it's a, it's a little rebirth which is going to happen in hospitality. We will have to follow the norms what the government sets for us or the medical experts set for us. And even if you see that, you know, how we are distancing the counters in the kitchen and how we distance, I don't know if you've seen the images of Elora, that's how this could easily see 250 to 300 different diners but it's we have almost like 60 or almost 70 seats in the dining room and i think that is also that you know the thing is that we might have to do more covers to survive to, to sustain but everything is going to change about hospitality even the food chains are shifting it's a, it's a big thing happening i was just speaking to a farmer in the morning from uh, india and they said you know we lost the cycle of crop 
because this pandemic happened and we couldn't do the harvest. And then after that, we couldn't do the processing. And then after that, we didn't sow during the rainy season because we don't have so much of labor around. So we are going to, sh there's a big shift happening in the global stage of uh, uh, crops, harvest. And that was my big PhD, which I'm doing on pollination. And this time, this is like, there's no sowing. And, but I think it's okay. As humans, we are extremely adaptable and they will be, uh, we will be coming back stronger than before. Of course, there will be a big shift happening. And I, know, I don't know why I'm saying that, but I hope it happens. It's hard, it's very hurtful to see that the only industry you, but you know, it's for me is also, I, I invest in a lot of different industries. So for me, arts is the most important subject. Of course, food being top of the pyramids, but I feel that it's a little difficult for seeing that there are no returns happening right now. It's, it's okay, on that, uh, on that note, I'll have to let you go, uh, Mr. Khanna. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, congratulations on your new restaurant and congratulations on all the amazing work you are doing. All our best wishes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Thanks a lot, Shelly, and thanks, uh, Vikasji, for joining us today. I think uh, one of the personal takeaways that I had today was uh, to, stay, to learn how to stay calm uh, and positive all through. <laughs> and overall, I think I would... <laughs> I'm telling you, I lost my passport on my wallet and the, the officers won't believe me, saying, but you're so calm. I said, what do you, I don't know how to shout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, that, that's one personal takeaway from me. So thanks a lot for joining us. Congratulations on your new restaurant, Alora, and all the very best for your journey. Thank you for, for introducing us. Yeah, thank thanks. Thanks a lot.